Thanks for staying with us. You're watching Newsnight and thanks for sharing your feedback as well. These are your thoughts this evening. And remember the SMS line is 2242, hashtag is Newsnight. Let's take a look at what Kenyans have to say. Engineer Lazaro Kanyambok says, uh, let's call a spade a spade. Many political parties in the country are tribal based. Another good number of them are briefcase parties with business interests. Strong ideologies are just on paper to attract defectors. Okay. Engineer Thank you for that. Frederick Okango, you say we are first Kenyans, then political parties. We express concerns of a growing political confusion threatening the stability of our country. Selfish political exploitation of fear and intolerance are bad signs for 2022. All right, uh, let's see. Paul Oruto, you say, I think Kenyans are tired of Kenyan politicians who after making linen very dirty, want to wear new ones while it's the same body inside at the end of the day there's nothing different okay i want to hear what my guests think about that thomas Kinude, you say for the interest of the rest of the of kenyans cacophonous a word used by kabando or kabando means involving or producing a harsh discordant mixture of sounds having an unpleasant mixture of sounds. Thomas Kinudia, thank you for bringing a, a dictionary to the program. And Rusule, you say politicians never learn from history, they create history. That is your view. Okay. I don't think we have... Uh, okay, do we have another one? All right, we'll take a look at your SMSs after this. Uh, Moses Kuria, let me come back to you. Uh, same individuals, different linen, uh, and that's why we are seeing a lot of people moving from party to party, but fundamentally their beliefs remain the same. What would you say to that viewer? Well, we are only 30 years old in, in our multi-party projects. So uh, sometimes we beat ourselves too harsh. Um, I think it has been part of the evolution. Uh, we still have a long way to go. But if you look at uh, contemporary history, even from other countries, we realize that we are not very really way off the mark. So um, the biggest mistake we can do over here is try to create some artificial a growth or speed of that process let our parties evolve let us take more time i think as we go ahead we cannot expect that one day we'll wake up and have the kind of political uh, or mature political parties like we have in the united kingdom or uh, where i am in the united states i think it's a process and we'll be heading there um of course one would, would wish that we work, wake up one day and and, uh, and find that for example the parties that were there in 92, the Fort Kenyas, or the Ford, not even Fort Kenya that time, the Ford, the DP, uh, were there alongside Kano. But see exactly what has happened. So it's a culture that uh, I hope will come to an end. Uh, some of us cannot be beaten too harsh because we have learned from the best. If you look at our top political players today, uh, Uru Kenyatta, uh, started from Kanu, from Kanu events, briefly to ODM, from ODM to, uh, you know, TNA, TNA to Jubilee, and now Jubilee to, to a mortician of, you know, dying political party. You, you look at uh, William Ruto, the same thing, you know, you know, from, from Kanu to uh, UDM, UDM to, you know, uh, URP, URP to, I don't know, you know, Jubilee, and now Jubilee now to... UDA from UDA, you know, God knows where. So it's, it's a culture that we're running, unfortunately, from my parents. It's not different from the other side of the, of the divide. You know, Laila Odinga, you know, uh, Kanu, uh, Ford, NDP, NDP, Liberal Party, Liberal Party, ODM Kenya, ODM Kenya, ODM, and sometimes Cor, sometimes NASA. So it is uh, like the Rolling Stones of Kitimikai, and we hope that one day it will come to a stop. So then, then let me ask you this. A, a couple of uh, years back when you were a loyal member of Jubilee, now you've said you no longer are, you are the member of parliament for uh, your party leader, uh, President Uru Kenyatta, who uh, hails from uh, Gatundu South. But now it's a confusing situation where uh, the president's uh, member of parliament was voted in in Jubilee, but now ascribes to another party called Chama Chakazi. What do you think the president makes of all that? I've, do you talk to him about that? Has he asked you because he is uh, your constituent, so to speak? Well, uh, it's not whether he asked me. It is me who should ask him what happened to our Jubilee. I am the aggrieved party. Because when he said we move from TNA to Jubilee, I was the first one. And I defended Jubilee for syphilis. Well, you know, let me say this. Maybe many people may not know. 
the gentleman who is you know with me in this in, in this panel kabando wa kabando mm. yeah, a childhood friend of mine uh, one day i had to go to mukoroine to decampaign him you know a very painful thing you know we 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 we, we grew up together uh you know kabando wa kabando was a chairman i was, I was a treasurer of the student union in the university of Nairobi when you were radicals battering the Moi government but because that much we believed in jubilee and the jubilee project look where we are and you know i want to you know say mea culpa to my friend kabando kabando you know on this you know live tv that uh, we defended something that should not have been defended and jubilee was a mistake okay kabando i think i need to give you a chance to respond before i ask moses and any anything else uh, on that same note. And just looking at the feedback from viewers this evening, just generally concerned about the state of our politics uh, and whether the country has learned any lessons moving forward. Thank you very much, uh, Wahila. I, I give compliments back to Moses Kuria. He should have said that uh, he was my speechwriter at the University of Nairobi on a, on a very serious note and uh, <laughs> very brilliant uh, treasurer and, uh, um, you know, in the, in the liberation struggle. That's why um, some time back he said that uh, although some of these individuals at the helm are seniors to us by the money they have, by the age and the position they occupy, they shouldn't forget that uh, we all in different uh, ways played a role in modeling the Kenyan democracy. That said, let me hasten to say that we should give credit to Raila Odinga's ODM because since 2007, and that's you know many years ago now, um, coming to I think 14 years, he has retained his party very strong. Uh, and the representation is across the country. Whether you like ODM or you don't, give kudos to Aguambo for maintaining a very robust political movement that is represented in Northern Kenya, in the coast, in Western, in Nyanza, and has even loyal members from uh, the strongholds of the, the Jubilee party honchos. So building parties is important. And even building small parties, like happens in, uh, in Germany, and even in, uh, in Australia, and in Canada, that thereafter post-election form coalitions is very important. But those parties need to have clarity of ideology. What do they stand for? I remember Wangarimatha is Mazigira was about greening, was about the environment. And we all know that she is perhaps the only worth individual to have had uh, a public institution, that is a road, uh, called now Forest Road, after her, because without Wankari's uh, stamina and brilliance and, brilliance and uh, uh, patriotism, we'll not be having a Uhuru Park. It was grabbed by Kanu. We'll not be walking the way we do in Karura. We'll not be having uh, even a Boritam. It would have gone a long time ago. So political parties like Mazigira, meaning environment, need to model their ideologies around a certain theme and agenda. So, in short, we do have many political parties in Kenya registered in the office of registrar of political parties. But most of them are briefcase. Most of them are ego trips. Uh, individuals should try to build them if they intend to have them having a purpose for the country. Because no party should be ethnic based and no party should be region based. That is by law of Kenya. Notwithstanding those observations, we have learned our history. We cannot live there, Moses has said very aptly. We need to seize the moment and prepare for the future. That would mean we must prevent situations like happened in 2017. What Moses Kuria is saying, that in 2017, and I hope Kuria can uh, verify this, there were directions and directives from the party leader of Jubilee for certain individuals within the party, either to the campaign or sabotage or even orchestrate rigging. And that was the beginning of the head for Jubilee party. But we cannot go back there now. What okay. we need now you, you have asked, is you actually have, to address. You have asked him a direct question. Do you want him to respond or it was a rhetorical question? 
is there a rhetorical question? I, I'm, I'm sure it's a rhetoric one. Uh, Moses and I share a lot in common, and uh, uh, even our challenges are normally uh, just uh, to, uh, well, I'm to sure our viewers the, would the want to hear. I'm, uh, I'm sure our viewers would want to hear if there's a response to that. Moses, is there any truth to what uh, Kabando is saying? Okay. That there were intentional attempts to decampaign certain candidates in 2017 in Jubilee, and that could be part of the problem today? Well, uh, I have heard this claim uh, left and right. Uh, all I know is that I do not want to dispute that um, that some people may have been treated unfairly. But some of the characters who complain that they were leaked by so and so, I know even their parents did not vote for them in their polling centers. But you know, you know, because it's that season whereby everything is legit. You know, I, I know of someone who from my own county, who even the polling center where they vote, he has got the family, they are like 20 members, and he got like three votes where he votes. No, surely, surely, if your own parents don't vote for you. So there are those claims. But either way, after the nominations, we were told that the only party that should have been, you know, people should be elected is on Jubilee Party. So I, I was I was in Mukuroide, for example, because Kabando Kabando had lost the Jubilee nomination to, you know, AGKI. And as part of our duty in the party, uh, irrespective of how he had lost that nomination, it was our duty to, to decampaign all other, all other candidates. And I'm saying this, that um, whether, they, whether they are founded or unfounded, we need to be very, 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 very careful about this whole issue of political parties. Because they are, you know, what we call uh, career ending tacos and career threatening tacos that you know once you are out there it does not matter what we say is that the winner is the one who is announced it is, it is not necessarily the one who had won and you know if our kenyans and if our younger politicians and myself and kabando i would be very 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 worried of political parties especially parties which come in lofty you know accolades like oh national parties oh big parties be very careful run my friend run because hapo kuna mtu ata ata atafanya vile Saitoti said about Kitinjio you know someone is is plotting in, in that food chain ask yourself are you on the menu or are you on the food table because, Moses is that know, why is, 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 is that why you never joined UDA some viewers well, asked this that, evening why did you not join you no. you seemed like you were let me tell you something more let me say this for record uh before I was affiliated with Chama Chakazi, I had uh, an association with a Chama called uh, a party called uh, People's Empowerment Party. Mm -hmm. And People's Empowerment Party, uh, on uh, 15th of December uh, last year, won uh, a civic seat in uh, in uh, Moranga, a place called Gatsuri. Uh, UDA was formed in its current form in uh, I think the last week of February this year. Uh, I was affiliated with a party way before UDA was formed. In fact, it is UDA who should have joined me. It is, it is not the other way around. In fact, the question should be asked, when you created a party, and you know very well Moses Kure was affiliated with a political party, and he was a member of your house relation, why didn't you join them? So because this discussion is being twisted and, you know, uh, you know, being made as if I am the one who refused to join the UDA party. Fact as stubborn Oiga, after winning that particular MCA seat, I went on to win the Georgia parliamentary seat in May. I went on to withdraw my candidate for the Kiamba parliamentary seat. I went on to play a pivotal central role in the election of Juguna Wanjiko as member of parliament for Kiamba on UDA ticket after a mutual understanding and a sit down with the, with the, with the deputy president, William Ruto. So, you know, let us not, you know, facts are stubborn. And one day, you know, you know, people may go, you know, trying to spoil other people's names, but I think at the end of the day, uh, uh, people will be, be vindicated. What I know is that the issue of coalitions and the issue of people forming partnerships for, for, for to achieve a common objectives, to uh, achieve some convergence of that is a reality which no one can reach away in this country. Okay. Kabando, I think uh, he's responded. Now you, you can carry on. I know you were talk, talking a bit about the past, but why we must look forward. Uh, and I'm keen to hear from you, Kabando, in terms of moving forward. Nobody knows who the next president of the country will be. A lot of people are declaring their intentions. But it seems like the next deputy president could easily be from the Mount Kenya region. You are hearing a lot of candidates saying, oh, you know, I'm looking for a running mate from Mount Kenya. Why the obsession with the region? 
Waihenya is actually a tragedy that uh, this should be happening. And um, it's a reversal of the democratic gains that we, we have uh, since Kenya returned to multi party uh, democracy in 1990. Now, uh, everyone is talking about a deputy president. Um, or rather the individuals who are trying to call the mountain. They are in reverse casting the people of Mount Kenya as people who are unfairly entitled. And I think we are not seeing the bigger picture that although it may appear like Mount Kenya is a very good girl, a very beautiful girl as uh, some politicians are, are saying, it also means that other communities, we are 42 plus uh, ethnic groups will perceive certain areas as having an unfair advantage on them. And we are talking about uh, diversity, the, that the government of Kenya must be the face of the Kenyan people. And in Tanzania, we are given these examples many times, or even in South Africa where Mandela came from, from a very small community. If the individual who is being put to government by one party, or one individual running for president is just to get the vote from Mount Kenya. We must not forget Wahiga, that the people of Mount Kenya are restless. I know some will say no, but the facts are stubborn, as Moses has very well said, that people are angry. And they are angry when the president comes from their area. They are angry when other institutions, critical institutions, in the Republic of Kenya are with the individuals from the same area. And therefore, the question should be, do we need our ethnic kingpin in order for our problem to be solved? Do we need another ethnic teen god from a large community who is clueless and who is insensitive and who may use his individual greed or interest around including surrogates and uh, the other uh, invested. You know, we have heard about the formation of Jubilee. And the individuals who are billionaires in this country have talked about how they were, they were very instrumental in forming Jubilee. We have heard about the formation of the county government of Kenya, of Nairobi. The city government of Nairobi, individuals who are running the biggest business saying we are the ones who made the arrangement between the governor and the running mate. This means that there may be some heavy interest like in America, the way we talk about the oil companies and the pharmaceutical companies in America capturing the state. So an individual coming from your village doesn't mean that that village is very prosperous. And I know Moses knows this. It doesn't mean, if you go to Baringo, President Moy was there for 24 years. But look at what is happening in Baringo today. They even have a senator who is the son of the, of the second president of the Republic of Kenya. So if you are looking for ethnic solutions to national problems, then that means we are very short-sighted. It means we have not learned. Let, let me ask Nyerere you this, Kabando. left a very united uh, Tanzania. Kabando, and I apologize for interrupting you. I want to show you some pictures, if we can put that up. One of many meetings of Mount Kenya leaders to discuss... Uh, the interests yes. of the region, are you saying that our democracy should have taken us sort of beyond this? Is that what you are, you are hinting at? There is nothing wrong with Higa to have individuals or group of individuals meeting in their regions or even uh, under their ethnic uh, umbrellas mm. or platforms. There is nothing wrong with that. What is wrong is now to have people saying that for, for them to have a vote from a certain community, in this case, the community around Mount Kenya, they will look for running mates from that region. Why can they say that they will go to the smallest community in the Republic of Kenya, bring the best of the manifesto, notwithstanding and irrespective the fact that you need uh, numbers to win, it means that we are doing the same thing over and over again in 2021, and we are expecting radically different results. It is going to be the curse for Kenya's political journey. It's going to be the, 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 the obstacle to realizing the cohesion that we have been talking about and that people dream about. So, so when, for instance, Jaramogi had opportunity to take over this country, 
He talked about the interests of the country, those early days. When Tom Boyer was being elected in Kamukoji, majority of the voters were from uh, not his super community in, in Homambi. And when uh, Chengoneko was being elected, even uh, John Kin was going to start in Transoya in those early days. Yes. I think what we need is a national renaissance, a rebirth of the dream that will make anybody from any community, from any region, win an election because one, you can unite the country, two, you have the economic blueprint mm -hmm. to resuscitate the economy, and thirdly, that will be pan-Africanist to bring the agenda for the continent of Africa, the continent of the black people. Obama was a president for the fourth president of the United States of America. B brief, briefly, on a Kabanu, junior I senator. To, yes. From a minority community. Mm -hmm. But he, he read America, now he's being rated among the top five American presidents since inceptions of the United States of America. Mm. So we need to think big, we, think, we need to, be, to, to dream big, and we need to have the courage and the audacity of moving Kenya in a very unconventional manner. Otherwise, now let me finish on this, one, this point and say okay. this. Okay, okay. Can, can, I, I, I want to say this. Uh, the biggest problem we have in Kenya today is because there is state capture and there is a lot of corruption, both in the politics and raping of the economy. And therefore, people are fearing even to antagonize the, the sitting president, not because uh, they want to have just the votes of Mount Kenya, where they think the president is going to influence people, but because they are fearing that if they do antagonize the sitting president, their skeletons in their shells will be uncovered. The problem in Kenya is that we are dishonest and we have a lot of thievery, a lot of corruption in our politics, and we need to deal with that question very boldly and apologetically. And if that is done, the wealth of Kenya will be sufficient for pros prosperity of everyone. Kabando, I think it's a good time to take a break. Moses, I'll give you a chance immediately we come back. Let's take that short break and uh, getting a lot of gems from my two guests uh, this evening. Uh, Kabando Kabando sharing what would be a utopian Kenya. And I know many of you probably agree with some of his uh, sentiments, but there's also the reality of the current state of our politics. Keep sending in your questions and we'll get a few more comments from them on the other side of this break. You're watching Newsnight. Stay with us. We'll be right back.